Hi there, YouTube. This is Rob Olson with a brief word from hockey fans. Now, I know you guys haven't seen me in a while. Um, that's mostly because I didn't want to be ruining your Christmas with a whole bunch of the NHL is having a failure to negotiate. Today, there was negotiations. Failure. Today, they brought in a mediator. Failure. Today, Bettman was absent. Failure. Today, Donald Fear was absent. Failure. So, I didn't want to do that to you guys. But now we actually have something to report. Um, and in a word, it's decertification. <sighs> decertification. Um, so, you guys were probably watching the TV, and since I know from YouTube stats that 75% of my audience is male, Go, guys. Um, you're watching the TV, you're watching TSN, ESPN, you know, whatever. And uh, you're sitting there watching the TV, and you see, you know, the ticker tape goes by, and you're like, Holy crap! Decertification! And, you know, predictably, your girlfriend walks by. And more than likely, she's one of those really hot, hockey-loving girlfriends, and her response to this is, Uh, what's that, babe? At which point, you fairly obviously respond. Oh, don't worry about it. It's all about unions. Can you get me a beer? And if that's the situation, that'll probably end like that. However, since my YouTube viewers are usually the smart type of individual, odds are you have the smart and hot hockey-loving girlfriend. At which point, when you're like, oh, it's all about unions. Can you get me a beer? Your girlfriend's like, <clears throat> you don't know what it is, do you? Get your own fucking beer. So, before everybody on my YouTube channel um, loses all their beer, let me tell you what decertification is all about. Now, from the NHLPA, we all know that the NHL works upon unions. Now, the unions are incredibly comfortable to the players uh, because you have somebody to fight for you. They set out agreed upon rules. Unions are a comfortable place, and the players have put a lot of effort over the years, and even especially the past couple of months, negotiating their union's agreement with the NHL. But since the US is where the NHL is based, um, and the US is the land of the lawsuit. Um, if you don't have a union, and your employer's screwing you over, you can sue them. So, if you decertify your union, and your employer, let's say the NHL, is holding a really bullshit lockout, you could sue them and sometimes went up to three times your salary. Now, given that the NHL um, is not hiring, you know, the McDonald's guy who's making 10 bucks an hour, they're hiring million dollar players. So, this lawsuit is not very attractive to them. And if they lose, they're going to be paying crap tons of money. Not to mention, they've also just spent half of a season where, where the owners aren't getting paid. So, decertification is bad. So the moment they heard the word decertification, the owners were like, Shit, Batman, do your thing! And Batman went out and filed an injunction with a New York judge to stop this decertification nonsense. Now, a lot of people will be like, okay, so, what happens? Well, the NHL's not going to want to let it get that far. If their injunction fails, and it looks like decertification is going to go through, they're going to be all like, yeah, how about we play some hockey? So, most announcers, cautiously optimistic that before the 7th or the 10th of January, you know, in the season-saving area, we're going to have hockey again. 
If we sign an agreement by those dates, we'll have 10 days of training camp, we'll have hockey by end of January. Say, save the half season, which is good enough to award a Stanley Cup. So, um, I have some words from viewers. Uh, my friend Mike from Boston uh, wanted to say that, first of all, go Bruins! Um, <laughs> he supports his owner, even though he's a douchebag. And he loves his players, but he really wants hockey to come back. And he thinks that we should not buy so much merchandising. My friend Martin from Philadelphia, obviously a Quebecer who, who moved there. Um, what he thinks is that we should, when, when the NHL comes back, we should watch it. Just don't go to the games, make them lose that revenue. And some other hockey fans are more hardcore than that. Um, Urkar from Montreal um, thinks that the way hockey fans have been treated have been was super disrespectful. Um, he thinks that people should watch hockey, just not the NHL, um, which is a pretty valid point, really. Um, my friend Alain, also from Montreal, um, was really distressed by this whole thing. He's been a hockey fan for like 20 plus years, you know, play street hockey, the whole kit, you know, you, me, whoever. Um, he says that people should not watch the NHL. Uh, either on RDS or at the Bell Center, people should not m buy merchandise, not do nothing, until the NHL's shown that, you know, they, you know, respect their fans. What he kept on hearing was that, oh, it's just a business. Well, LA wants to show the NHL that it is a business and the fans are pissed. You know what? I sympathize with that. But, hockey fans, there is a bright light in our future. Tomorrow morning, at 9.30 in the morning, Team Canada Juniors kicks off their first exhibition game of the tournament against Finland. I will be watching, and after the game, I will give you my comments. We will have a brief word from hockey fans about real hockey going on right now, and it's gonna rock. So have a good night, guys.